on the cross next to Jesus. Two male factors, as the Bible calls them. And the Bible doesn't say much about their background. In fact, I preached a message during the uh, Easter uh, uh, season a few years back. We always have the 12 last words of Jesus. Or oh, seven, not 12, seven last words of Jesus. One of them being, today shall thou be with me in paradise. And I call that message a happy ending. And the reason why I call it a happy ending is because of this. There isn't much that's written about the two thieves on the cross, aside from the fact that they were uh, famous for being uh, on the cross the same time Jesus Christ was crucified, right? right? Right. Now, the Bible does not talk about how they how they were brought up. The Bible does not talk about how they were born. Does not talk about their childhood. Does not talk about how they got into this criminal life that they found themselves. Because we don't know much about them, much about them other than the fact that they were guilty of the crimes that they committed. If it had not been for their encounter with God on the cross, then the thief who asked Christ for uh, uh, salvation or Christ for, he, he really didn't ask him for salvation, but he said, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. And Jesus uh, stopped dying long enough to look at that young man and say, today shall thou be with me in that paradise. That would mean that everybody that falls underneath him, every other sin would be covered as well. Because if Jesus died for him, then he had to die for everybody else. If he died for the thief, and he and 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 the crucif and the cross is reserved for the harshest of criminals, then that means that he had to also die for everybody so else. Let's we're going to focus our attention on the last component. Now we dealt with audience. Now let's deal with the authority of the Bible, the veracity or the authority of the Bible. The Bible is the the verac veracity is to confirm to truth or fact. Authority is the right to control, command, or determine. The reason that we believe God's word is because we believe that it is the truth. That, And we say it all the time that this is not just any book. You can't compare this book to the Quran. You can't compare this book to uh, the, uh, the, to, to the, uh, the, the, the other um, books that man might have written. Um, you can't compare this book to anything that's been published because it stands above everything in your library in your per personal library in your public library or whatnot it stands above everything because god's word is truth god is the embodiment of truth his word is truth because it is a reflection of the god who wrote it god is the embodiment of truth he is truth first john five and six this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Ephesians 4.21, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. He is the embodiment of truth. He cannot lie. We can't pick and choose what we we'll agree, what we will agree with, and what we won't agree with, or what we'll accept and what we won't accept. But the Bible is a reflection of the God who uh, wrote the Bible. Again, He is the embodiment of truth. Deuteronomy thirty-two and four is a scripture that speaks to that. Uh, Jesus is the Rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 5 through 6, Thomas said unto the Lord, We know not whither thou goest, and how can, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, <laughs> the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You would think that. The, the disciples who were who walked with Jesus, who ate with Jesus, who slept with Jesus, because of their proximity, they would know who Jesus was, right? 
I mean, they would know that he is the father. They would know that he is the son. They would know that they, they, would, they, would, have, they would have that revelation of who he was. But here Thomas is talking to him as if he don't know who he is. And then he had the nerve to call him Lord. Thomas said unto him, Lord, Lord is a uh, is, is, is another title for who he is. Lord. We know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then, now, if he is the truth, then his word is the truth as well. 2 Corinthians 6 and 7, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And, and in Hebrews, Paul said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts in and it cuts going in and it cuts going out. What does that mean? That means that you're not always going to feel comfortable every time you come to Bible class or you go to church. You know, sometimes the pastor's going to be walking right down your aisle, right down your row, and sometimes sit right on your lap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You be like, how did he know that? I mean, was he, was he peeking in my window last night? Because this message seems like it is coming right at me. When actually, it's God that's work, the God that's working through him to speak directly to your situation. Some would say because of his age, that would make it irrelevant. So wow. <laughs> that something this old would have to be, that would have to, we, we, should, we shouldn't have to believe this book because it was written, you know, thousands of years ago. So we should be looking at something more contemporary to believe. That's why we have Scientologists and, and, uh, and we have... Um, new age religion and whatnot, you know, because this book is too old. We need something a little more contemporary because we ain't feeling this, you know. Uh, God is God is uh, God is in all of us, you know. We all are gods. How many of you heard of the five percenters, the five percent religion? Right. That that means that that that, that there, there's a such thing as gods and earths, uh, and that's in the hip hop world. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, that. All the, the black man is God and the black woman is called Earth. And, and, and you'd be surprised by some of the music that you might be listening to. You're thinking that, you know, these artists have a gospel song on their album with 17 other songs when they ain't even talking about God, the God that you know. They're talking about themselves as God or being an embodiment of God. And that, that's, that's a lie. He is the supreme being, and there is no one greater than him. I don't have to go into all of that, but it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. God is the supreme being. There is no one that's greater than him. There's no one more powerful. There's no one wiser. There's no one more knowledgeable. There is no one greater than God. I love this scripture in Isaiah, declaring the ending from the beginning and from ancient times, those things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, now who, who, can, who, who, who got anything to say against that? I mean, as powerful as Barack Obama is, he can't, have, he, he can't say nothing behind that. that that's, letting, that's letting everybody know that God is in control. Well, I hope and pray this Bible lesson was a blessing to you. Um, I hope that you now understand who the Bible was written to. It was written to everybody. And I hope and pray that God's word is now uh, a preeminent voice in your life. You understand that God's word should be the final say in all of our lives. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a co-worker about what's going on at Pastor Nimmons TV. Feel free to subscribe to this YouTube broadcast. You can email us at PastorNimmonsTV at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We would love to hear from you. If you want us to shout you out in this broadcast, you can do any one of those uh, uh, 
contact us at any one of those venues in any one of those areas and we will do so because we want to let you know that we appreciate you viewing us we appreciate you following us as we follow Christ because this ministry I'm praying and hoping is being a blessing to you and we pray as we always do as we get ready to get out of here that you are blessed by what you see at Pastor Nimmons TV. Oh,